Raise your hand if you enjoy fishing. Okay, now raise your hand if you've ever done that in a wetland environment. I enjoy fishing in the wetlands. I love those early morning boat rides with the sun chasing us to our fishing spot, or the bronze tail of a 25 inch redfish with its dark black spot watching my every move, or the sun going for a quick swim as we glide across the water on the way back to our little camp to share the stories that will last a lifetime. It is actually a way that the men in my family bond. Every year, my grandfather, dad, brother, and I go on a hunting trip or fishing trip to either Mississippi or Louisiana. I'll never forget the time I was fishing in Louisiana with my grandfather and his friend. All three of us had just casted out to an oyster bed just off a point. And what seemed like a millisecond later, we all caught some of the biggest redfish any of us have ever seen in our entire life. I was 13 when this happened. That was the day I caught a 45 inch redfish. That's a memory I'll never forget. And these memories would have never been possible without going on these cherished trips to the wetlands of Louisiana. And every time we go back, we have seen firsthand that a growing portion of these cherished wetlands are disappearing. For example, two years ago, we went to Louisiana to go to a place where we had hunted many times the year before. As we pulled up, I noticed we were surrounded by open water. Just one year ago, this open area had been filled with little tiny islands full of life, and our blind had been on an edge of a peninsula. Now our blind was the only piece of land in this entire area. So what happened? It is clear to anyone paying attention that these wetlands are disappearing. It is reported that in Louisiana and the Mississippi River Delta contain nearly three million acres of wetlands. And in Louisiana alone, we lose on average about 50 miles every year. Furthermore, of the 100 million acres of wetlands in the United States, we lose 60,000 acres annually. You're probably thinking, that sounds terrible, but so what? It won't affect me. And maybe you're right. I mean, think about it. Do I really care if my house gets flooded every time it storms? Or even worse, if my water becomes contaminated with deadly toxins? And that's just two potential scenarios. There are many, many more. The wetlands protect us from the storms, from storms and the oceans. Also, if we lose the wetlands, we, will, we could possibly lose all of our seafood. And nobody can tell me I'm the only man in this room that would be devastated if we ran out of shrimp. <laughs> if the wetlands go, erosion will affect our farms and fields. Also, there will be more floods. Wetlands act as a natural sponge soaking up all the excess water that filters into them. So if we lose the wetlands, we'll experience flooding like never before. Lastly, the wetlands filter out pollutants caused by increasing transmission from cars, fertilizer and pesticide use, and animal grazing. So if we lose the wetlands, we lose that natural filter. Also, more than one third of the animals on the US endangered species list live in the wetlands. So if we lose the wetlands, more than likely these animals are going to become extinct. For example, the salt marsh harvest mouse, the California clapper rail, and the Santa Cruz long-tailed salamander are all in danger of becoming extinct if we lose the wetlands. The wetlands supply tons of jobs to the people in that area. So if we lose the wetlands, we will lose many more jobs, adding to our already great unemployment problem. Here's the truth, people. The wetlands help prevent erosion, supply food, prevent flood damage, support our economy, filter out pollutants, harbor endangered species, and recharge groundwaters and feed downstream water. And the list goes on and on. Hopefully you are starting to get the picture. The wetlands are extremely important. Frankly, we cannot allow them to vanish. We need to do whatever we can to prevent this travesty. There are many ways that we can help prevent all the events I mentioned earlier. We can donate our time and money to an organization already in place working on preventing the, preserving the wetlands. We can become advocates for preserving our wetlands by speaking to our legislators about the issues. Or we can simply take care of the wetlands in our surrounding area. There are already many organizations in place working on doing just that. For example, Ducks Unlimited, whose main focus is preserving the wetlands that waterfowl thrive in, the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership, which helps restore the Louisiana coast, and Wetlands International, which helps preserve and restore the wetlands. And hopefully someday, with all y'all's help, I'll be able to pass the tradition of fishing and hunting on to my kids and grandkids. Thank you.